What is the role of identifying mental health issues or supporting people through those issues as a leader or, uh, or as an HR employee at a company? Yeah, well, I think there's two things. I think you have to educate your managers because a lot of the time the managers don't know the signs or are nervous to ask questions when they see something that might be a little off. You know, so they'll come to me or my team. Yes, of course we have benefits. We have a Calm app or we have, you know, we use Frankie Health where people can see a therapist or a coach or all these things. So we have all those tools we know to recommend them. We are very public about it. And I think that's also a difference. We talk about them on our all hands calls. We do a health fair, a mental health month. So we at least make it part of the conversation so that it's not a stigma of like, oh, I can't tell anybody that I'm stressing. I'm burnt out. I'm worried. You know, we do interviews when people will see taking certain sick days or their behavior changes you know, the managers will speak to my team if they don't feel comfortable. We'll do kind of a check-in like, you've missed a lot of days of work or you seem to be distracted or your performance just seems like, is there something going on? How can we help you? You know, and, and that's really, you know, making sure people know that we have the resources and then the support. You know, we have a generous leave policy. If someone's like, I just need to take a month off unpaid or a month off paid or this combination. We let them. Uh, You just said we have a call map, and I nodded as if I had any idea what that is. What is a call map? A call map? Yeah, you said we have a call map. Maybe I misunderstood it. I'm glad I asked the question. Okay. You said it was when you were talking about we use Frankie something, and right before that you said- help for coaching and therapists and other help. They and also, right before that, you said we have a call map. Oh, calm. the call oh, calm app. app. <laughs> I'm like, wait, call map sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Like an emergency, who do we call in the case of emergency map? We do. I, no. Maybe that we should do have something. emergency contacts in case I don't hear from people and I kind of need to check in on somebody. But we, yeah, we, I um, was imagining it was some yeah. kind of buddy system for mental health. <laughs> well, we kind of have those things too. I mean, we, we do yeah. have top pals. We, we have that actually when people start and they're like, I don't know how to navigate this or it's overwhelming to some people. But we really, I, I think part of it, especially in the remote culture, is making it known that we're very supportive of mental health and we have these benefits and talk about them. Yeah. So people will post, like we have a channel that's called Frankie Health and somebody will be like, you know, and, and there's our company, like most of, you know, you, you can opt out if you don't want to be in that channel, like of any Slack channel, but someone will be like, I'm having problem getting into the app. Well, that person is now saying publicly that they're having an issue and trying to get into the app for a certain reason. Or we post, you know, we do topics. We do speakers on um, overwhelming, feeling imposter syndrome, feeling overwhelmed, how to man, you know, we, we hand, how to manage through crisis. So we do a lot of trainings to try to make it seem like part of a conversation instead of like a random thing that comes up and people are embarrassed to talk about. Yeah. Okay. And last I have question. found that a lot more people are open to be like, I'm in therapy. I have a good therapist. I'm, I'm on something. You know, and so I think it's also knowing that we have those things that we can provide so people feel comfortable. Yeah, normalizing it. Um, So this is my last question before we go to a caller. Um, Interesting Slack channels, unique Slack channel ideas that our listeners can steal. Like everyone knows about the pets Slack channel where you put pictures of your pets or, you know, we have a recognition Slack channel where we recognize each other's efforts and things. You have anything in there that, you know, people probably haven't heard of before? Cool Slack channel ideas. It's funny that you say the pets because that is probably our most popular. We just had a Halloween contest for pets. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So we have, um, let's see, we do a game night one. We have game nights. We have dads in the trenches. We have working moms. We have, I mean, we have book clubs, uh, green thumb recipes. We yeah, we do a um, a top community. So like if you, we, we actually have a pretty, even though we're remote, we have a pretty robust intranet and people will go in and say like, oh, I'm visiting my mom for Thanksgiving in Boston. Let's see who coworkers are around there. And they'll send messages like, hey, I'm in town. You guys want to meet for coffee? And then they'll all share pictures of meetings with their coworkers. 
So huh. we encourage those type of things. That's very cool. I, I we think have, that is we have unique. a 30 by 30. So we do fitness every day. That's 30 month, 30 days in the month for 30 minutes. You have to work out. So, and then we have like a, what's going on now? We have a, what the meme contest this month. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Okay, fabulous. Well, let's go to a caller that has a question for you. Okay. Hi there. I work with many incredibly capable and talented individuals who are adamant that they do not want to take on a leadership role. They hold back from progressing their career within organizations or elect to limit the growth of their own business by keeping it as a solo operator, one person show, so they don't have to take on the title of being a boss. I would love to hear your thoughts on the root cause of such mindsets and specifically what advice would you give to someone to overcome their limiting beliefs around owning a leadership role? Oh, that's a good question. So there's a couple of things that I would say. One is definitely have a lot of those at TopTel. We have a high potential program that we work with. And a lot of the folks that are in there are like, I'm an individual contributor. This is all I want to be. Um, I do think it's healthy that there are some, co- we, we need some of those people, right? There are so many people that we hire that are want to know, like, when am I getting promoted? When am I getting promoted? I want to get promoted. And it's like, if everybody wanted to get promoted, we'd lose people because they'd max out and we don't have enough manager roles. So at some point, I think it's okay. I had someone that ran my learning and development team. She's been with me for five, almost five years. Never wanted to be an indiv- always individual contributor. I don't want to manage. I don't want to manage. I don't want to manage. She had a boss that she didn't like. She's like, I think I can do better. I'm like, let's try it. We'll give you one person or you know, we'll give you some managerial, managerial responsibilities without the management aspect, Mm. you know, so more of an influence versus being a manager. I also think a good way to do it is, um, in engineering, we do this a lot. We have a huge engineering team and someone will, will need to create a new team. We'll make a title called an interim engineering manager. And we do this a lot. And I would say, 75% 75% of the time, people in that role are like, oh, I like this. We provide them with training. We homegrown a lot of our manager training, how to deal with difficult situations, how to go from being a peer to a manager, do all that stuff. They, I, 70% is success rate. There's 30% that get in that job and they're like, tried it, don't want it. And yeah. that's okay too. So at least giving an opportunity to say, you can have this interim role, but it's okay if you don't want it. Because they don't want it to look like a career limiting move if they're like, I don't want it. We make it okay to say, just try it. We think you have the skills. We'll train you. Give it six months. If you're not comfortable, you can go back to your other role. There's also an evolution in people's growth and their priorities. I was a person who desperately, desperately wanted to be a manager early in my career. And I was just fighting for it. You know, I wanted nothing more than to manage people. And the reason was because I wanted to feel more important. You know, I mean, it wasn't like, I want to be of service and help people grow. No, I was just young, hungry, and I wanted to be more important. And a manager title title was going to get me there. I then finally became a manager. And then I grew up in those ranks and eventually became a CHRO at a tech company. And I really liked it. I, I actually, I liked it. I didn't realize how hard it was going to be because it has nothing to do with you. Being a great leader and manager is all about service. And I didn't get that when I was wanting to be a manager. You know, when I sold my business and came to Culture Partners, Joe Terry, our CEO, asked me if managing people was something that I wanted to do and if it was important to me. And I thought, you know, I'm glad that I've done it. I'm glad that I've had the the psychological shift in understanding that, in fact, it's the, if it's an ego thing, you're probably really bad at it. And I think my first management position, I was probably really bad at it. And it wasn't until I finally realized it had nothing to do with me and was really about giving that then I, I was able to say, okay, you know, for this next evolution, I don't really want to manage because it's a lot of work. When you do it right, it should be 
the overwhelming element of what you do. And right now I want to be thinking deeply about trends and topics and helping our clients. And I don't want to spend as much time one-on-one with people who I want to help get to the next level. So it also depends also on where people are in, in their life, right? Right. If, if you're exactly. someone who's got like three young children at home, which some people do, they're like, not the time. You yeah. Know? True. That's a good point. Like I'm, I'm in recovery now and I have four sponsees and I mentor them. I mean, one of them is coming over in a few hours and we do some step work. And those are like, I manage them, you know, and by manage them, it's being of service to them. I just, I give them all my time. I don't really want to also do it with employees at the same time. So right. that's a good point. Okay. It's, well, it's I a wanna... time commitment. So you have to, yeah. you have to be ready and realize that it's not, you know, you might not want the drama that comes with managing, but you also might have the mental capacity because of stuff going on in your personal life. 